Uh, hello everybody, so in today's tutorial we're going to uh, be modeling uh, Kistifus Museum, designed by Big. Uh, this is a project that was uh, recently recently uh, opened uh, in Norway, so I thought it would be interesting to show you uh, the process of uh, creating this kind of structure uh, in Grasshopper, uh, specifically in Grasshopper for Rhino. So we're going to be uh, talking about uh, a definition that is we're going to create this kind of shape, especially these kind of details. And I'll show you how you can you can go about it. Uh, but before doing that, let's uh, let's just hear a little bit about this project from uh, Bjarke Kinglesk himself. In, in our search for a site, uh, we came further and further away from the old mill because. Uh, we somehow didn't want to compete with history and heritage. Uh, and ultimately we found that, and we, we kept going closer and closer to the water, because from the water you had a more incredible view of the river and of the mill. And eventually it just became clear to us that by spanning the river, we could transform the two sides into one continuous journey. And it just felt like everything was, was very simple. And, and you can say at that point, the whole project be became about bringing together uh, opposites, bringing together the two sides of the river, bringing together the mountain and the, and the forest. Uh, and then of course the idea of the, of the two galleries, the introverted and the extroverted, the vertical and the horizontal. And, and, and joining those two created the, the gesture of the building that then, as a consequence, made it feel like a sculpture. All right, so you've heard uh, the concept behind this building. So uh, I found it quite intriguing and quite uh, mesmerizing in this, in this uh, environment. So uh, here we can see the, the process of creating the, the concept. It's just a simple shape, square shape, that is twisted 90 degrees and it's divided in three areas. Uh, it's divided in this horizontal area, vertical area, and then the area in the middle. Uh, and here is, for example, a physical model of this, so you can see uh, how it all looks like. So let's get started. And uh, here I will actually guide you through the, the whole process of creating this definition in Grasshopper and uh, uh, how, how you can think about it when you have a problem like this. So First thing, of course, was just to create a simple, uh, simple shape like this. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the first thing that you want to do here is create a brep, uh, brep object, and then assign uh, assign that here set on brep. And then you select uh, the object, and this is uh, this is what you're gonna get. So you're gonna get this uh, this uh, shape. The next thing that we're going to do here is we're going to use uh, the construct brep. And this, this actually allows you to, to select specific edges or faces or uh, vertices on this uh, geometry. You can see here the outputs, faces, uh, edges, and vertices. So in this case, we just used a list item to select, to select two of these faces. So I'm gonna hide this one for now. And you can see here that we selected this face and this face here. And we're using these faces uh, in order to create uh, multiple segments of, of this uh, shape. So, so what I'm trying to achieve here is to create uh, some divisions here. Oh, that's, that was a bad drawing. So I, I try to create multiple divisions like this on this surface. And for that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be using a plugin that's called, uh, that's called Butterfish. And it has this uh, component here that's called uh, twin uh, twin uh, through surfaces, and uh, that's that's the component that uh, we're going to be using. And for that reason, we we need to have the starting surface and uh, ending surface. So that's why we we used these two. And uh, here we we created uh, we we took these two surfaces. Uh, we input them here in the surfaces as a list. Uh, and here with the range, uh, we give it uh, the amount of divisions that we want uh, to see here. So 
uh, what, what happens then is that uh, I get divisions like this. So I get multiple surfaces. Uh, and if I move this number, then these divisions will also uh, be moving. So for example, if I type 190 here, you will see that uh, the divisions will change and I will have a different number. There it is. And now let's, let's bring it back to 200. That was our initial uh, division count. So uh, with this number, uh, with this slider, you can change the amount of divisions. So uh, how we chose this number is by just looking at this geometry here. And I was trying to guess uh, approximately what's gonna be uh, enough to, to get this kind of uh, density of, of this geometry. So that's the number that I came up with. Of course, you can play, play, play around with this and get any other density that you want. So the next thing that we want to do here is we want to take uh, the surfaces that are not going to be needed to cut uh, to cut this uh, geometry. And that's going to be this first surface and this last surface. That's why we're using uh, the component called call index. And it, it, this is just like a list item, but it actually uh, excludes the numbers that you that, that you input. So in this case, we excluded number zero and we excluded number 200. And this is uh, the first and the last uh, surface. So if I preview this, you will see that now I have all of these surfaces without that first one and this last one. All right, so the next step is to use a component called split brep multiple. And what this does, this splits this brep into multiple uh, multiple elements uh, based on these surfaces that we just gave it. So uh, now all of these uh, elements are completely separated. So if I select, let me just show you. If I select this, you will see that I have uh, here open breps. It's open breps uh, because they are like split, but they are not uh, geometries, like they're not uh, solid. So that's why we use uh, that's why we use uh, cap holes, which would give us, uh, later on, this would give us close breps. So we now we have, when, when we arrive here, we have close breps, and that's what we need. So uh, how we're going to structure this definition is uh, we're going to divide, we're going to divide uh, this whole structure into three uh, big segments. So this is going to be the first segment, the middle point is going to be the second segment, and the third segment is going to be this vertical one. And what we're going to be using, we're going to be using rotation. And we're going to be rotating uh, elements from here until there. And then uh, we're going to be rotating this third part completely 90 degrees to achieve this shape. So you can think of this as uh, three, uh, three big unknown uh, surfaces. So for example, this is going to be the first one. This is going to be the second one. And this is going to be uh, the third one, and this is going to be equal, let's say, one number we use 200. So now uh, you just want to uh, think about in ma mathematical terms as uh, as this. So this is the equation that we're going to be using. So a plus b plus uh, c equals 200. And what are we trying to achieve here is uh, to have a parametric definition that can move this middle area. For example, if I want to move it in this direction, then that would mean that my uh, the distribution of the numbers would be different, like this. And I also want to have the option that I can scale it in this direction, this direction. So I end up with something like this. All right. So this is going to be my B and this is going to be my B. So this is a move. And this is going to be scale in both directions. So how do we achieve this uh, mathematically? So that's uh, that's what, what what we need to to decide here in this definition. And here, if you if you watch closer to these numbers, uh, you will notice that here we have uh, we have. Uh, I'll now preview this three. So this is going to be my uh, three. Uh, so this is going to be my A, my B, and my C here, just like this. And we uh, we gave it the number of uh, 200. Uh, this is going to be the number of divisions. And this is going to be my, our end number here. So how do we go from here? Uh, if, you, if you see here, uh, if we move, for example, uh, I have here sliders called rotation area. We have a scale rotation area, rotation area finish, and move rotation area. So 
uh, what, what this means in terms of uh, specific uh, changes that you're gonna see. If I select this middle area, and let me just hide this, and let's say that I, that I say uh, scale rotation area, if I move this number, you will see that it's gonna be uh, changing my scaling. So that's, that's what we're gonna be doing here. And if you want to move it, you can just go like this and it will start moving. So that's, uh, that's the whole idea behind uh, mathematical uh, equation here. So uh, how do we achieve this? We're actually going to give some ranges to these numbers. So I'm gonna just uh, here create one line just to give you a better overview. Let's say that this is number zero and this is number 200. And let's say that this is going to be uh, number 40. This is gonna be starting from 41. And here it's gonna be 60 and here's gonna be 61. So this range, range C goes from 61 to 200. Range B goes from 41 to uh, 60. And range A goes from uh, zero to 40. And uh, what we need to achieve is we need to achieve the connection between these numbers and this number here. So once we change these numbers, they're gonna be following. So if I move 41 to 40, this is gonna be 39. So that's, that's what we're trying to achieve here. So that's why if you see in the definition here, there is uh, always uh, X minus one. So X minus one means that uh, this number is going to be X minus one, and this is gonna be X in this example. And also in the other area, so in this other example, 61 uh, is going to be x plus 1, if this is x. See, so we are, we're changing these two, uh, and that's why we have these uh, numbers here. So you can imagine that uh, in this case, here we have 60, we have 61, sorry, 61 to 200, and here we have 41, 60. So this is gonna be these numbers, 41, 60, and here is gonna be zero and 40. So you can start off by, start off by thinking uh, about these numbers in this way. So uh, let, let's, let's start from here. So what I did here, I created, uh, I, took, I, took, uh, I took some a list item and I wanted to give it this range. So the whole, whole thing here, is actually just giving it the range from zero to 40. We're using here the domain, which is saying, okay, go from zero to 40. And this uh, range is going to be uh, connected to the domain uh, of one to 40. And this is uh, just giving us the number, the difference, which is 40. And in this case, we're saying, okay, I want to have uh, this number of items uh, from this list. And that's why this is actually what we get there. The same thing goes with this guy. And the whole thing here is basically the same thing as this one on the top and here as well. So we give it the range. All right, so now how do we move this uh, and how do we scale this uh, as, as shown here? So uh, it's very simple. You just need to uh, move these numbers, both of these numbers, you need to move them uh, if you want to, to move the, the B, if you want to, to move the B, you need to add plus and you, you need to give it a number and it will move both of these numbers up. Same thing with these guys. Plus, give it a slider and it, it moves uh, in this direction or if you, you, you actually add a negative number here, it will move it in the opposite direction. So that's the whole idea and this is what it does here. So uh, let me show you. If I select the B and I get, let's say this is 41 for the sake of demonstration and this is 60. So I, I have uh, a number here. Imagine that this is, uh, doesn't matter what this number is. It, it, this can be 41 itself uh, and this can be also 60. So don't pay attention to these things here yet. So 
uh, this is going to be 60 and this is going to be also 41 so 41 minus 3 but here we have plus so you may know that 41 plus minus 3 will give us negative so uh, this will give us 38 it will not it will not give us plus uh, so based on this rotation here that's uh, that's what we're gonna get so you can see that if I uh, uh, go in, uh, in negative it will move in both directions and if I go to positive it will move in the opposite direction here and that's 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 what it does now when it comes to scaling uh, we need to do the same thing so let's say that this is 40 41 uh, 60 61 however in this case if you want this to go forward and if you want to go this to go in this way then uh, these numbers need to go uh, in the negative so you need to 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 subtract it and uh, in uh, these numbers on the opposite need to go on positive so you need to to make them bigger so that's why and and then of course uh, if you want to scale it downward this goes on the opposite directions so uh, this connection with this connection needs to be plus and minus here that's why here we have uh, uh, addition and here we have subtraction so uh, imagine that uh, this is going to be our number so let's say again that this is 41 and let's say here that this is going to be uh, what was it 60 61 so here we get uh, this result is going to be 41 plus minus 8 and this is going to be equal uh, this is going to be equal 33 so you see that this number is lower because we need the lower number here if you want to scale that's why it's minus here that's why we have uh, this minus here and then here what happens is you get 61 so you get you get 61 minus minus 8 and you get here uh, 69 which means this is a higher number so you can see that from here this number is decreasing and from here this number is increasing and that's why you see uh, the difference in scaling so that's why when we move this uh, number you can see what's going on here And this is of course the movement and this is the scaling so that's that's the whole ma mathematical process behind it and now let's uh, let's mo move forward so the next thing here I'm gonna just delete all of this uh, and let's continue on so we have these three now what's the next step the next step is to use this middle one and to have the rotation for each individual uh, in each individual unit here so I want to rotate the whole thing 90 degrees but I want to do it gradually so how do we achieve this so basically uh, we're going to be using simple rotation however we need to play around a little bit with this so what is all of this here this means that uh, uh, for example I'll show you here it has uh, let me see it has uh, 87 or uh, there's gonna be 88 close breps so what I'm doing here I'm, I'm using a list a length to achieve that uh, to get that number which is gonna be 88 that's the total number the total number of uh, units that I want to rotate and now here all I'm doing is I'm, I'm creating one mathematical formula which is uh, going to be uh, my rotation this is gonna be 90 so what I'm doing here is I'm creating uh, like 90 degrees divided by uh, divided by this number the whole number minus 1 so this is gonna be like let's say uh, 88 minus 1 uh, and then I'm, I'm, I'm basically dividing this and I'm giving this as uh, the rotation so what I want to do I want to, to know what is uh, the angle that each individual 
uh, unit needs to be rotated by. And, and this is how we get it. And let's see, let's see what this number is. Actually, we don't need to calculate, we can just see here. Let me show you. So this is the unit, this is the, the, the angle. And now we give this angle uh, to the degrees here because uh, we want to have this, this is the step, this is the series. We start from zero and this is the first angle. And the count is the number of uh, these elements, which is gonna be 88. So what I, what I did here, I used rotation. I used the geometry, which is this these elements here. So I said, okay, I want you to, to rotate all of these geometries, but each individual one with the angle of 1.034 and so on. And this is going to be the plane. This is just gonna be like uh, in which plane you want to rotate. If you want to rotate, uh, like if you want to rotate around this uh, axis or you want to rotate in this axis. So that's, that's, that's what this does. And uh, to get this plane, we used a uh, line, line SDL. And for the start of this line, I just used uh, the, uh, I used this uh, center here of this plane uh, and here, and then uh, I gave it the vector of, uh, of y direction. So it just needs a vector and a starting line and then it knows in which direction the plane is rotating. So once I uncover this, you will see that we're gonna get uh, this rotation. Let me just hide this. So, and let me just hide also the, all the other elements. Okay, so that's our middle area and we just rotated it. And now the last thing is to rotate uh, the third area. And that's what we do here uh, in this element. This is our third uh, area. We just need to rotate it 90 degrees and we simply use rotate and give it uh, the default angle of 90 degrees. We use the same plane. And once we uncover that, you can see that uh, we got that result. And here is uh, our geometry. And now what you can do, you can play around. And then at the end, we just merge it in one single uh, one single uh, unit. I'm gonna hide this now. And uh, we're just going to play around with this area here. And the sliders that you want to pay attention to are these. So what I can do, I can create here, let's say some groups. So you know that this is going to be the ones that are influencing everything else, these ones. So these ones are influencing the division. These ones are uh, influencing the rotation area, the start of rotation area. So for example, if I, let me just go like this. And if I change this number, you can see that the start of my rotation area is moving. Yeah, if I change uh, the rotation area finish, you can also see that uh, my end is moving here. And now I will just select this area in the middle so that it's visible so you know what I'm doing. And this is the scaling if you want to go it further or backward and of course move just like we talked about it. So that's that's how you go about this project. So now you can of course uh, play around with it, try to, to change it, try to get it as close as to the to the actual geometry here. Uh, but that's uh, the overall process that, that you go through. All right, so that would be uh, how you can parametrically create uh, this project. Uh, of course, uh, there's a lot of more details that you can do uh, later if you, if you wish. But for now, we're gonna cover uh, this. Uh, if you want to get these project files, uh, there's a link in the description uh, that goes to my Patreon page and you can join there and get all of these files. In addition to that, if you think that you want to explore your skills in Rhino and Grasshopper further, if you want to improve your skills, I have a special training program called Rhino for Architects. So if, if this is something that you would be interested in, uh, there is a first link in the description where you can apply uh, and send your application and then uh, we schedule a call and talk about uh, talk about that in detail. Uh, in addition to that, today I would like to present you one uh, interesting project uh, and it's called Archiskills. Uh, it's a place where you can find architectural resources and it, I found it quite interesting because it's just like a big library of 
uh, all of the magazines, all of the like collection of portfolios, uh, collection of uh, vis visualization studios, tutorials. There's even special se uh, segments here where you can explore different libraries, different model libraries, uh, different, uh, here is the, for example, 3D modeling tutorials, and you can explore here uh, some uh, other channels as well that create 3D tutorials. Uh, there is also uh, printables, there is uh, materials, vegetation libraries, uh, there is fonts, text, logos. There's a collection of websites here also that create, uh, that publish architectural competitions. Uh, here's one, for example, Young Architects Competition is a very famous one. So very useful. So make sure to check our skills out and bookmark it. So you have all this material at one place. That would be all for today. So if you have any questions for me, comments, please feel free uh, to let me know in the comment section below and see you in the next tutorial.